Ever wondered how that immersive audio experience you get with Dolby Atmos is achieved? How is it different than surround sound? Let's dive in the magic behind it. Greetings! From your streaming service to your home theater, Dolby Atmos has revolutionized the way we listen to music. Music now not only surrounds you, but envelopes you, and even floats above you. That is the power of Dolby Atmos, folks. I fell in love with Atmos back when Apple announced they would adopt the format for their spatial audio delivery on Apple Music. All on paper, too. Just sold on the concept. Had not heard a single note in Atmos. I did have some experience with 5.1, but the promise of this new thing was so different, so exciting. I was building the studio at the time, but I was so sold on the concept that I had my studio designer, the wonderful Jeff Headback, do a redesign of the control room for Atmos. Then Dolby came in to tune the room, and the rest is history. I still get goosebumps every time when I remember playing Elton's Rocket Man in Atmos for the first time. When friends and clients come to the studio, I play them Rocket Man and sit on the side, just to watch them smile when the oohs come in. And I keep listening to all sorts of cool mixes, more and more, some from colleagues, others my own. What an amazing experience. There was one element of those mixes in particular, though, that made this experience so unique. But before we look at that, let's first cover some basics. Very briefly, Dolby Atmos gets mixed in a DAW using the Dolby Atmos renderer, either built in the DAW or using the external Dolby Atmos renderer application. The resulting ADM BWF file that includes some metadata for play on various devices and binaural playback on headphones gets delivered to the label or your distributor service if you're an indie, then gets on the platforms for streaming. Good so far? Who streams it? At this point, the major players are Apple Music, Amazon Music HD, Entitled. Waiting on you, Spotify. Where do people listen? Headphones, smart speakers, soundbars, tablets, laptops, TVs, home systems, even cars. But what are we listening to? What quality? Let's take a closer look. First, Atmos and the codecs used via streaming, namely DD plus Jock which stands for Dolby Digital Plus with Joint Object Coding, and the very creatively named AC4 IMS, which stands for Audio Codec 4 with Immersive Stereo, and with one exception, which I'll mention in a second, is a lossy format at 768 Kilo BBS. All services use DD plus jock for delivery to mobile devices and speakers, like phones, laptops, or tablets, but Amazon and Tidal also use AC4 IMS primarily, and this is me assuming, mainly for compatibility with Android devices main difference of the two codecs, just for the trivia aspect of it, is that DD plus Jock is already spatially coded. Actually, Apple's 7.1.4 is derived out of the DD plus Jock and not directly from the ADM BWF file. Whereas AC4 IMS carries with it the binaural metadata that are used to create the binaural headphone and mobile devices speakers experience. Confused yet? Go back and watch that again. A note for mixers, professional or bedroom. Don't get confused. What you hear through your DAW 
or the Dolby Atmos renderer is not lossy. Only the export is lossy, like the uh, MP4 from the renderer, which is uh, DD plus jock encoded. That exception I mentioned is Dolby True HD. But does it do Atmos? More on that coming up. Now let's take a ride back into the Dolby Digital Past. The Dolby Digital Past, Conan? Yes, Sandy, the Dolby Digital Past. All the way to the year of laser discs, sometime in the mid 90s. Even though 5.1 existed since 1976, it wasn't until the mid 90s that 5.1 digital surround appeared in the form of AC3 and Dolby competitor DTS. And a quick note. Not mentioning the other formats here, since this video is about Atmos. So, what do we have here? 5.1 discrete channels, later 7.1 with Dolby Digital Plus, where what you got into that channel at the mixing stage is what would come out of that channel that was married to that speaker. If a speaker was broken or not installed, or your other half threw it out the window because it was messing with the decor, bye-bye to that particular audio coming out of that particular speaker. The experience was good, well, in a relatively appropriate room with no crazy reflections or anything and with a correct setup, meaning no speaker one in the bookcase and speaker two under the table and so on. But when all was working, we are talking about a gorgeous surround sound. But still, something was missing. What was missing, that is now part of the Atmos experience, is first the ability of Atmos to fold down to whatever speaker amount, positioning, room, etc. you have available, with the help of smart devices for sure, including headphones, where if you tried to listen to a 5.1 mix on headphones, you'd only be listening to the left and right channels. But the main part for me is height. Atmos contains height information. There is stuff coming out of overhead speakers. It sounds amazing. It wraps around you. It is something else. Even in binaural on headphones, though tricky, it sounds, well, immersive. But if I wanted to listen to Lossless Atmos, you can. Through Dolby True HD on Blu-ray. And no, I will not mention computer hacks that do exist, but are beyond the scope of this video. Dolby True HD, also known as MLP, Meridian Lossless Packing, is a lossless 7.1 format that carries audio at 24 bit and up to 192 kilohertz. It requires 10 times the bitrate of Atmos and also includes discrete 7.1, 5.1 and stereo renders in that bit stream. Here, I'll put up some uh, more info and you can pause the video and read it if you so fancy. Anyways, it is very heavy, so bandwidth and storage-wise, it makes no economic or practical sense for DSPs to use it for streaming. Though one can only hope. But does it do Atmos? Yes, it does! It includes metadata that when used with compatible AVRs, receivers, that metadata gets decoded to the correct object placement for the height speakers. There's so much cool music out there now in Dolby Atmos. Let me know below if you'd like me to do some song walkthroughs, YouTube and label copyright gods permitting, of course, of both my own and other colleagues' mixes. But in the meantime, here's a playlist of some very, very cool mixes for you to check out. 